Okay, so I am super tired, so this is going to be a pretty quick and basic review where I give my thoughts on the chapter. Uh, predictions and stuff like that will probably be a separate video. Maybe I'll do a live stream tomorrow night, but I really just want to get the review done because I want to get you guys the review. So, in my live reaction, you could see I probably, you probably think I would like this chapter based off of my live reaction. Well, honestly, the chapter is good. I mean, it's a necessary, it's one of those chapters that is necessary. I can't, I'm not going to rant about it. Was I very happy with it? Not really, because a lot of this chapter is telling us stuff we already knew. Lola and Big Mom's daughter and Nami has her Reaper card. Oh my god, I never would have guessed that, Oda. Oh my god, we totally needed to be informed of that. But I get it, Nami and the others needed to be informed that this was the case. And I understand that. However, that doesn't mean I enjoyed it. I, I, I enjoyed it. I understand that part of storytelling, which is telling your characters about events that take place. I get that part of storytelling. I completely understand. Doesn't mean I need to like it. Now, Cracker. First of all, I gotta say, uh, I personally think Cracker is already being overhyped. He is one of the, he is one of the three commanders, but the three, the three great commanders that I'm going to be blunt here. We know nothing about Cracker. We know almost nothing about him. You have no reason to say how he, we had no reason to be comparing him to somebody like Jack at the moment. Jack fought against Inarashi and Nakamamuchi who sailed with Gold Roger. There. And Whitebeard. There. That is a feat. This man doesn't really have any feet. So, but until I not, his only feat today is a bounty of, what, 860 million? Yeah, 860 million. So that is his only feat, but, so it just is kind of like, okay, and he probably could have just killed a lot of people. Who knows? Like, you're like, who knows? We remember, a bounty is based on how big of a threat you are to the government and to the people of the world. So, yeah, you can have a really high bounty and not be very strong. Look at Ustav. Ustav should not have a bounty of 200 million. They think he's dangerous, so they gave him one. We got to see one of the homies die this chapter, which was interesting. Maybe that's the first time we've seen one of the homies die. But that was a small thing. I think I, the thing in this chapter, the thing that really got me, was that they can't attack Nami. No one is attacking Nami to get a low of delivery card. Now, because Vibri cards are connected to the person's life force, maybe because the Vibri card is connected to Big Mom's life force, maybe they can like sense her soul inside of the paper and are unable to attack Nami because the paper contains Big Mom's soul. Maybe, I'm not sure, but I found that thing very, very interesting. But where was Nami keeping that Vibri card? Like, she had pulled it out of her boobs. I mean, I understand her boobs are like an infinite pocket space, pocket space dimension, but still, where was she keeping that? I just yanked it out there. But, it's just like, it's like, does she keep it in, where did she put the delivery card when she take the shower? Like, has she kept it in her boobs since the, since Thriller Bark? I would assume the delivery card can get destroyed if they're wet. So I don't think Nami had just had the delivery card between her two boobs since that arc. In fact, with all of the revealing clothes Nami wears, I think we would notice it. There was just a piece of paper. Like a large piece of paper between her boobs. It's weird as hell. It really is very weird. Now, there was something I really liked. Which was that it's Chopper and uh, Carrot. While well, they were in the prison, of, in the mirror prison. Even though the mirror was shattered, they're still okay. So it wasn't some bullshit like, if the mirror is shattered, we all die. I liked it, that it wasn't something stupid like that. I was really, really happy about that. That made me very happy. Also, the apple juice guy got a name. His name is Pound. I believe it. Pound or Pound? I think mean, no, it's the same thing. Never mind. I told you I'm sleepy. Cut me a break. I'm like half awake right now. But his name is Pound. And he is Lola Daddy. Which, actually, when you think about it, makes perfect sense. Now, I believe there was Roger Bates who said this, and I know a couple other people have been saying it. Cracker is a mini-boss of the arc. He'd be equivalent to Bellamy or Bluno. Not Bellamy, he'd be equivalent to, a uh, Bluno or, like, the Coliseum. 
But then again, Bluto would take it out much later in the arc, but that's beside the point. But he's the equivalent to the Coliseum and Bluto, and I guess I can see that. I mean, I guess I can see Cracker being Luffy's little opponent that he beats up. I mean, maybe he won't fight Cracker, maybe he'll run away. I mean, we have to remember, the only reason Dolphin Mango was so much trouble for Luffy, well, besides the fact that he was stronger, but one of the reasons he caused Luffy so much trouble would make it a bit different in his fighting style. Dolphin Mango fighting style is just bad for Luffy. Now, who knows? Maybe Luffy can take this guy. Bounty is not everything. I, I may, I've been considering doing a video on it, but bounty is not everything. It does not matter to get a bounty of 860 million. Well, as important, we should not use that to rank in power. Instead, we should wait until we see him fight, and then we should try to find out how strong he is. That is what I believe, at least. Oh, by the way, we got to see Kuzan on the color page. That was nice. Yeah, and you got, I'm all over the place today, and you can tell I'm fucking tired, by the way. But yeah, I really said all I had to say about this chapter. If I had to rate it, I would give it a 9 out of 10. Just because we're in the seducing woods. I mean, come on, can we please go somewhere else? We've been in the seducing woods, or whatever the hell they're called, for like, oh, like four or five chapters now. It's getting really annoying, and I'm getting freaking sick of it. I want to get out of the seducing woods, and I want to go somewhere. One of the great things about One Piece is constantly being in a new location, and I'm getting sick of being in this one dog goddamn place. It's not like we've dressed rope though, where we had a whole island. We're just spending like half the arc so far in a forest. Or we could, or hopefully next chapter we'll cut over to uh, Sanji and his family, or maybe what, uh, we're going, what's going on with Brooke. Whoever the hell this Brooke guy is. Everybody's not talking about this Brooke guy. I don't know who the hell he is. I mean, I forgot it. I mean, I forgot who he was, maybe. It doesn't show up enough. But yeah, so, uh, I still think Nami probably gonna somehow end up fighting Bruce Lee. It'll probably be Nami versus... If we do start our... If we do start getting a couple battles next arc... Not next arc, next chapter. If we start getting battles next chapter, it will be Nami versus Bruce Lee and Luffy versus Cracker. I think that's a pretty safe assumption. I'll be honest, I'm more interested in Nami versus Bruce Lee because I love Nami. He's one of my favorite characters, and when she does get a fight, I'll be very happy. I want to see this Nami fight. Especially with all the moves she was pulling in Bruce Lee a couple of chapters ago. I when she, like, pulled the climate out, out of her boobs, and then she did that back flip and landed, like, it an, on that awesome pose. I mean, no, no, that was all great. That was greatness. That was fucking greatness. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed my review, slash ramble, slash thought, slash whatever it was of One Piece chapter 836. Please like if you enjoyed the video. Sub subscribe for more One Piece reviews. Tell me your thoughts on the chapter in the comment section down below. And above all else, guys, have a great day.